Welcome to the long-awaited next episode of the DIY Electric Piano Project. Previously we created this test rig. It seems to work well, so now we need to take what we've learned from here and repeat it for many keys. I think this is where the skill really comes in and the ability to consistently recreate parts so that they work and feel the same is essential. I do applaud those that are making electric pianos such as Vintage Vibe, Valenti or the Rose Music Group. So here I've got a bass, I'm going to use this for my piano and I'm going to create a piano bass style piano. I find with these projects it's key to make the goal easier otherwise it's easy to let it eat up your life. So creating a smaller piano has to be a good way to go. Next I'm going to attach this button. This is going to be placed at the back and it's going to allow the hammers to be attached to the piano and the bass. This button next needs the hammer holders attaching. This has a captive nut embedded in them for each hammer. I've created a jig that allows the spacing of these to be controlled. It's key to get these lined up and level. Next we're going to add the balance rail. This has a spacer that raises the balance rail to the height that we worked out from our test rig. It takes quite a bit of effort to get the balance rail aligned with the hammer. If I was going into mass manufacture, I'd need to create a jig that aligns the whole piano. But don't worry, that's not something I'm planning on doing anytime soon. Okay, this seems okay. I do wonder how long this system will last. Um, a lot of decisions I've made were to create this piano as cheap and as easily as possible. This is not always the best plan. Will the balance bridge wear out? Will the, the keys bed in? I guess we need to finish this and play it to to see if it will work so next we need to add the anti key bounce clips and set a level the goal is to give the key enough travel so it has a natural feel the position of these clips i'm not sure on so i'm going to play around with these as i kind of create the piano i guess when compared to a wallitzer piano or a fender Rhodes, the setup is very sensitive to these small measurements and these small measurements are key to creating that feel and response that's going to feel right. Let's do a few more. So the process is just repeating this, but it's so important that to get it right. Let's try a few keys. The anti-key bounce clips need adjusting for each key, but they seem to be working quite well. I think it's starting to get there. I'm starting to believe that this could be a workable instrument. But oh, this has taken a while. It appears like, oh, you know, to put one key on, how would you say? Maximum of five minutes? Now, if you were to do a full size 88 key piano, that's seven and a half hours just putting keys on and setting them up. Again, I have so much respect for piano builders. I am interested in how many people out there have tried the Vintage Vibe Piano. If you have been lucky enough, do comment and let us know what you thought. And if there is one in the UK that someone would let a random person, mainly me, have a go, do drop us an email. I do have a huge respect for the people at Vintage Vibe and I would expect that there's a huge percentage of vintage electric pianos out there that have benefited from either Vintage Vibe parts or Vintage Vibe tutorials. I know mine has. And I'm really interested to see what improvements and tweaks that they've put into their piano over the original design. One of my favourite bands is Bright Eyes and I know they use a Vintage Vibe piano. So yeah, definitely interesting. Alright, back to my piano. I think we're getting there. We've got a few keys and it's starting to feel and work great. There is one that needs a little bit of sanding to kind of get it to bounce back correctly. We'll do that later. In this part of the series, the goal is just to create the key bed and then the next part we're going to try and look at the harp and the tines and just see where it leads. As always, I hope this works, but there's always a risk it won't and we need to redesign this after. That's not an issue. That's totally part of the process of taking on a project like this. So yeah, while I add more keys, let's talk about the Valente piano. Personally, I really like this one. 
it has a price point that's a little bit more accessible than the vintage vibe piano and from the demos i've heard the reeds and electromagnetic pickups create an interesting sound there is an element of fender rods an element of Wurlitzer there but i think it's a little unfair to compare this piano to either of those it has its own sound characteristics i really enjoy the sustained characteristics of this piano and with what appears to be a lightweight design it's got to be a winner so once more if anyone has one please do let us know what you think of it and also anyone in the uk has one and you'd be willing to let a stranger have a go do get in touch I'd, i'm really interested to get my hands on one of these i really look forward to hearing more from this piano and seeing it used on records or wherever else it can be used okay but back to my piano i think it's getting there but at times like these i am glad i taught myself into looking at a shorter piano the keys took some sanding and it took a bit of work to get them where they are i used spruce for this and to be honest i'm not that happy with them they are warping um, whenever there's knots the grain isn't particularly straight i do suspect that i will remake these out of a harder wood at some point for now though i'm just going to proceed with these and if that's what we do later that's what we do later one thing I didn't do was glue the pin in the hammers and I think this was a mistake because I could have glued the hammers to be have quite a tight tolerance between the uh, the bracket that holds them so if I was to do that again I would definitely be uh, gluing the pins in let's carry on putting some more parts on so I suppose we've talked about the Valente and the vintage vibe piano let's talk about the, the other piano that's on the horizon the Rose Mark 8 now this looks very interesting. Not only is the legendary Rhodes name back, it looks to improve upon previous iterations. I do look forward to see what Dan and the team have produced and now they have evolved the design. Don't know any details, but I do expect some interesting details coming. I guess there's not much more I can say on this piano just yet, but I'll be watching and ready for when new information comes out. All right, back to this project. I need a little bit of setup work for the anti key bounce, but for now, it's all put together. It it's assembles. We can kind of try different keys and see what it feels like. Once we have more to the piano, we can look at optimizing the design and create equal power across the key bed. If I run my finger across the keys, They all feel and move, and the hammers move up and down and return freely. And that's what we want for this part. So for the final part of this episode, we're just going to attach my felt hammer tips. I think we'll need to wait for the glue drives before moving on to the next part, which is creating the harp. But once we've created the harp, we can look at adding the dampers, electronics, and everything else that goes with it to try to tidy up this design. I'm really happy we've got this far and starting to see the progress and the end goal coming along. And I hope you're enjoying this project and the direction the project's going. I don't think it's going to be too much longer, but I've definitely said that before. But yeah, if you want to see how this sounds, do subscribe and I'll try and get the next part out as soon as possible. And I uh, much appreciate everyone that has subscribed and watched along so far. Alright, till next time, keep pressing those keys.